Shelley Hoffberg is a clairvoyant, medium, pet psychic, and tarot reader. She does not ask for the details about your life, but primarily relies on her gift of clairvoyance to receive the psychic insights that will be the most helpful to you about your soulmate, relationships, money concerns, and your career path. As a pet psychic, she will receive insights about what your pet or pets wants you to know. As a medium, she will connect with your loved ones on the other side. Shelley Hoffberg is the host of the Psychic Horizon radio show, produced by Goldilocks Productions and presented on Blog Talk Radio, Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Shelley brings together the pioneers and visionary teachers to share with you some of the most enlightening knowledge that is out there today to expand your horizons and open the paths to higher consciousness. Welcome to the Psychic Horizon Show. I'm your host, Psychic Shelley Hoffberg, and today's special guest is Carl Young, who will be talking about the tarot and doing tarot readings for you. And before I bring on Carl, I just want to make some quick announcements that on March 29th, I'm going to have Eve Spirit Speaks talking about the four clairs. On April 5th, I'm having Frank Falcon. On April 12th, I'm having Jeremy Ryden, the author of The Quest Method, Your Intuitive Destiny Guide, and Your So Story, How to Create the Life You Always Wanted. And on April 19th, I'm having medium Brian Ross, who's the host of the Magical Journey radio show that comes on 8 p.m. Wednesdays, Eastern Time. And on April 26th, I'm having Bob Stahl, who'll be talking about angel cards. On this coming, uh, on March 31st, Carl Young and myself will be in on, on April 28th. Carl Young and myself will be at the School of Multidimensional Healings and Science Psychic Fair from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on April 7th, I'll be at the Healing Key in Long Beach. And on April 8th, I'll be in North Hollywood at the uh, the New Earth Expo at, located at the Garland Hotel in North Hollywood. And on April 14th, um, Carl Young and myself will be at the Learning Life Foundation Psychic Fair in Irvine from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm now ready to bring on my guest, Carl Young. Hello, Carl. Hey, Shelley. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Oh, I'm doing very well. Oh, good. Yeah. I just wanted to mention that Learning Light is in Anaheim, not Irvine. Oh, Anaheim. Sorry about that. No problem. (laughs) Multidimensional school in Irvine. And can you tell the callers a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm a psychic. I'm a tarot reader. I also do hypnotherapy. I've been doing it for quite a long time. I'm a multi-generational psychic. My mother was psychic. My grandfather was psychic. Oh, wow. And, Carl, how did you get started with the tarot? Well, I've been interested in it for a long time. I studied it academically, and then uh, later I decided I'd actually do readings and stuff. So I've been doing it for about 15 years. Oh, good. And it, like I said, it ran in my family. My mom was a reader, and my grandfather, who was from Romania, used to do tea leaf readings and, and card readings long ago. Oh, that's interesting. And, Carl, let's take our first caller, which is area code 805. Hello, 805. Oh, thank you, Shelly. Hi, Carl. This is Donna. Hi. Can you tell us? Yeah. Hello, How are you? Donna. Hi. Hi. Um, do I ask a question? or? Yes. Yes. Okay, I wanted to know about my finances, you know, whether a windfall or a little job or change of lifestyle or meeting someone is going to change my situation. 
Okay, so you want to see what you're, what's going on like right now and where it's going? Yes, please. Okay. I'm shuffling. Well, it looks really good. Okay. Um, the first thing I think is you need to, there's something you need to take a risk on, though. I mean, be willing to take a little bit of a risk. Okay. And then I see um, uh, a strong position you'll be in, but you'll have to take a little bit of a risk. And I said I see money coming in. And I, are you looking for a job? Well, kind of a little part-time job, maybe as a companion to someone or something like that. Okay, so I see you taking a risk on something. It, it's not a huge risk. It's a calculated risk. But you might have to, you know, take a little bit of a risk or, or feel like you are able to take a risk. It might be something that's a little bit out of what you're used to doing or something. And okay. I see that, that that's going to put you in a strong position, and then you, you'll you money will come your way. An opportunity will come. You got I got the um, page of Pentacles, which is the card of a financial opportunity or a promotion or a job. So I would really just be willing to take a little bit of a risk and step out of your comfort zone. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. That's what I see. Okay. Right. Thank you. And Donna, um, I see a job coming up for a man. Okay. And they're wealthy people. They live in the wealthy part of town. Uh Uh-huh. So it does look like you would be compensated very well. And it looks like it could be a long-term uh, position. He has health problems, but they're minor health problems. You know, he's under a doctor's care, so he could be around for a long a long time. So I feel the job could be a long-term job. So I feel that there will be money coming to you uh, through employment. Yeah. I also feel that you're going to start some kind of business on your own uh, as we get into June, July, August, that you're going to have an idea for a business. It's going to be a side business. You're going to be working for the man, and you're going to be doing uh, your own business on the side. So you have a, you'll have a good idea for a business as we get into you know uh, June, July, August. And so you're going to be doing two things. Money's going to be coming in for your own efforts, and money's going to be coming in for a companion job. Yeah. That really fits with the cards I got, too. Yeah, that sounds really good. Yeah, doesn't it? That's really good. Yeah, it fits, it, it fits with the cards. I got the emperor card giving you an opportunity, so that would be like maybe a wealthy gentleman. Yeah, so I feel that you have two opportunities. And, Carl... How can Donna get in contact with you? You can email me at cyoung1890 gmail.com or you can call me at 714-643-0280. 714-643-0280. And you can get a hold of me, Donna, at 818-744-5241 or go to psychichorizon.com. And thank you for calling the Psychic Horizon Show today, Donna. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. You're welcome. I'm now going to continue my interview with Carl Young on the tarot, and then we're going to take our next caller, which is area code 480. When and where did the tarot start, Carl? Well, the original game was called Tarachi, and it started in during the Renaissance about 500 years ago in Italy. And it was, it started off as just a game. It was like a gambling game. And after about a hundred years, it became very popular and it started being used by metaphysical people as a divinatory device. And then it started to be, take on some of the, uh, it was changed into a more of a metaphysical kind of a tool. And especially the modern deck, especially the 19th century with, um, 
esoteric groups in England, like the Order of the Golden Dawn, began creating decks that weren't really for the game, but for um, uh, metaphysical uses. Interesting. It has an interesting history. It and does. Carl, let's take our next caller, which is area code 480. Hello, 480. Hi, Hi this is Mike. Hi, Hello, Mike. Mike. Hi. Uh, my question is, I've got an interview either maybe tomorrow or maybe Saturday um, for a sales job. Um, curious if it if you kind of see it as an improvement of my current sales job or from my current sales job or more of a lateral or should I just kind of stay pat with what I'm doing? Okay. Hang on, let me shuffle real quick. Okay, what I'm feeling is, again, I got the same card I got for the last lady to start with is the fool card, which means you need to be able to take a risk. But you need to be real cool about it, kind of calm and cool about it, but there's a risk. Does that make sense? A willingness um, to take a risk. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it could be with the, my side project that I'm going to start as well. Yes, it, there's a willingness to take a risk, but be calm and cool about it. You know what I'm saying? You step into it because I feel like there's a you're feeling a little bit of anxiety and that's it's it's really just it's not real what you're worried about you really have an opportunity and you're really gonna come out come out strong um, with these jobs you can get these jobs any pretty much any sales job you want you need to come out strong and you have to take a little risk it's more of like a um, you need a, it's not a risk like a, a, a money risk. It's more like a, a personal risk, like you need to put yourself out there a little bit more, if that makes sense. Yep. Nope. Very much yep. so. Yep. And that's going to rock. You're going to rock. So don't worry about it. Good. Good. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. No problem. Um, Mike, I feel that you will get hired for the new sales job. And it looks like it could be a better work environment for you and better uh, salary and commission, that there could be a base salary and plus commissions, and it's a good commission base. So it looks like you're kind of making a change for the better, and it looks like your side project is going to take off June, July, August. You're going to start it now, but it's really going to take off June, July, August. Those are very profitable months for you that you'll be making more money off of your side project. So that will be going well for you also. And Carl, how can Mike get in contact with you? Mike, you can email me at cyoung1890gmail.com. That's cyoung1890gmail. And you can call me or text me at 714-643-0280. 714-643-0280. And you could get a hold of me, Mike, at 818-744-5241 or go to PsychicHorizon.com. And thank you for calling the Psychic Horizon Show, Mike. Thank you both. You're welcome. I'm now going to continue my interview with Carl Young on the tarot. And then yes. we're going to take our next caller, which is area code 720 is the tarot a psychic tool? Well, yeah, like I was saying in the history, it it was a playing card game, and it had, it's actually two decks. It's, there's a um, major arcana and minor arcana. And because esoteric people during these periods of time in the last 500 years had to kind of keep under the radar, they had to kind of hide because some of the stuff they were doing was illegal um, because of, uh, you know, church... Um, prejudices about them, they came up with codes and secret um, meanings, and they also in, um, developed it around the Kabbalah and alchemy. So in time, the cards became a metaphysical tool as much or more than a game. So you can read an awful, there's a lot of symbols and stuff. You can learn a lot about esoterica just looking at the cards because there's a lot of symbols 
things a key to uh, alchemy, the alchemical elements, and um, initiatory um, steps and practices. And there's a deep amount. The later ones, the late, the ones that were made in the in late 1890s, early 20th century, uh, the Order of the Golden Dawn, they were also familiar with like Freud and Jung. There's a lot of psychological um, uh, inferences in it. So it's a very powerful tool. You can use it for psychological meanings and bring out creativity and learn about yourself as much as do fortune telling. Very sophisticated. Interesting. So let's take our next caller, Carl, which is area code 720. Hello, 720. Hello. And who do we have the pleasure of speaking to? Hi, my name is Lola. Hey, Lola. Hello, Lola. Hey. So I have um, one question. My daughter is dating somebody right now. And Mm -hmm. um, uh, my daughter is dating somebody right now. Her name is Haley, and his name is Andy. And I want to know if they're going to stay together. Okay. Let me shuffle. I'm going to do a little relationship spread spread here. Hmm. Well, the relationship looks good. Um, she seems like she's she has a little bit of a trust issue, and he's very spiritual. He's kind of a deep guy, I think, and he has a he's in touch. No, with his I trust. think it's completely the opposite. <laughs> okay, maybe <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, maybe he has trust issues. But anyway, whatever the yeah. case, I see one of them is having some little trust issues, and the other one is kind of they're kind of very in touch with the, the feminine aspect and the, maybe even psychic. And the, that that aspect of them is making the other, the trust issue has to do with this, this other person, the psychic person, is a little new, a little different than what that person's used to. And they're, they're kind of wanting to ease into it. It's a little bit unfamiliar for them because the person is metaphysical or spiritual and that's new to the other yeah. person. But yeah. the relationship I get is really good. And you got an ace of cups, which is like a soulmate relationship. It's really that's a really good card to get for a relationship. So that spiritual person, if they if once the the person I, I maybe the the boyfriend begins to become comfortable with the uh your daughter's kind of spiritual aspect or deep feminine aspect. He'll warm up to that, and the relationship will really, he'll learn from it, and, and it'll open things up in him, and, it, and a real beautiful relationship can evolve from that. Yeah. I don't know huh. if that's what you wanted to hear, but <laughs> that's what I'm getting. Okay. I feel that Haley and Anthony have a soulmate connection, and that he does really care about your daughter. He has feelings for her. He's very emotional. She's very emotional. So their emotions are running strong. And by the time we get into June, July, August, September, going into the summer months, it looks like that they'll get closer. The things may be a little bit up and down until June. And then once we get into June, that July, August, September period, they become closer and the relationship will work out uh, between the two of them. You know, it, it it will work out. And they could be together the next couple years. And huh. is Haley in high school or college? She's in college, and his name is Andy. Oh, Andy. Sorry about that. Yeah. It's okay. Um, I see them throughout their college you know, being together, you know, I don't see any other boyfriends coming up. I see her staying with Andy. She cares about him a lot and really has strong feelings and emotions for him, and he has strong feelings and emotions towards her. So I feel as they're through their college years, they'll be together, and they may be together as we get out of college when they go into the work world. So it looks like the relationship has the potential of being a long-term relationship. 
I feel like they're going to really learn a lot about themselves in this relationship and grow together and mature together. So it's going to be good, hmm. whatever the ups and downs. Hmm. All right. How can we get in contact with you? Um, you can email me at cyoung1890 gmail dot com. Cyoung. 1890gmail.com, or you can call me or text me at 714-643-0280, 714-643-0280. And you can get a hold of me at 818-744-5241, or go to psychichorizon.com. And thank you for calling no, me. Like, I was- yes. I was going to ask you, you said that you're going to be at some psychic fairs coming up. I I didn't catch some of those. Um, Carl Young and I are going to be at the School of Multidimensional Healing and Science uh, Psychic Fair uh, on on March uh, 31st uh, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then I'm going to be at the Healing Key. Where is that? The Healing Key. Uh, the other fair is in Irvine. The Healing Key is in okay. Long Beach. I'm going to okay. be there from uh, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. And then on uh, April 14th, Carl Young and myself will be at the Learning Light Foundation Psychic Fair mm-hmm. from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then we'll be back at the School of Multidimensional Healing and Science Psychic Fair. And that's in Anaheim, by the way, the other one. And then we'll be back at the School of Multidimensional Healing and Science Psychic Fair in Irvine on April 28th. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, and have a good day. (laughs) Bye. Bye. You there? Hello, this is the show producer. It appears that Shelly has her call has dropped. Carl, just hold, <laughs> hang in there, please, while uh, Shelly calls okay. back in. <laughs> cool. Thank you. So, um, you know, I guess today's the start of Mercury retrograde. Yay! <laughs> <It's really cool>. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so hey, I mean, it's all good. <laughs> it's just the communication is going to get wonky, but it's it's yeah. going to be fine. <laughs> it's, it's so all right, let me Shelby. Yeah, I'm sure Shelby's calling back in. Um, <laughs> okay, should I call back in, or should I just sit here? No, no, you're fine. Yeah. We're waiting for Shelly to call yeah. back in. Oh, okay, here she is. She's back now. Okay. All right. Well. Welcome back, Shelly. <laughs> Thank you. That was a, that took exactly. a little journey. <laughs> uh, our next caller is Carolyn, area code 818. Hello, Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. Hi. Hi, Carl. Hi, Shelly. Um, okay, the uh, question I have is, when will yes. I get a letter to notify me of the conclusion of my lawsuit? When will that happen? Yeah, when will I get a letter or a notification that it's concluded and they give me some information? Okay, hold on one second. Okay. I'm put part two. Um, May, late May, early June. You said late May or June. Okay, late yeah. May. Well, probably right. like around June 1st, to think of it that way. Okay, I didn't, I didn't uh, hear that last part. What did you say? Think of it as like June first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Around the week. Okay, so it's March. Okay, April. I, I, see, I see the calendar in my mind, so that's what they show me. Oh, so okay. that's my. Okay, what you you got? Um, thank you, Carl. So you did anything? I kind of agree with Talk Carl on the time that it's going to be June. Okay. That you're going All to right, get a letter in June, and you're going to receive some kind of notification, uh, an, email, an email, you know, letting you know that the letter is being sent. Oh, okay. 
that letter is being sent. Okay, that's good. I've been looking every day for something. I thank you both. All right. Have a good day, yep. Carolyn. Nice okay. Um, we're now going to continue our interview with Carl Young, and then we're going to uh, take our next caller, which is area code 212, Brian. And uh, what are the best types of decks to use, Carl? Well, there's a lot of decks, and some of them are really beautiful. Um, there's different kinds of decks. Um, there's oracle decks, and they sometimes call them tarot oracle decks, but they're not the tarot deck. The tarot deck has 78 cards. It has a major arcana and a minor arcana, and that's the real tarot. And those, that's the one, in my opinion, you want to learn on because it's the one that has the history and the, it's very well developed. The other ones are nice too. I, I don't, I use them sometimes. Um, for learning the writer deck, which is the Order of the Golden Dawn deck that was drawn by uh, Pamela Coleman Smith, is a very good deck because it's the standard deck that all the other decks, or a lot of the, most of the other decks are built on. So that's the best one to learn on, I think, if you're just beginning. Oh, that's good. And let's take our next caller, which is Brian, area code 212. Hello, Brian. Hi, it's uh, Bryn, B-R-Y-N. Oh, Bryn. Okay. Sorry about that, okay. Bryn. And Bryn, okay, how can we help you today? Hi, Shelly. Hi, Carl. Um, Hi. Yeah, I have a specific question. Um, I'm developing, uh, I'm trying to practice developing a healing, some healing modalities. And one of the things that my guides have showed me, it showed me that I was like over a massage table, kind of waving hands over mm -hmm. the body. And then mm -hmm. there's like um, also some things I've learned and I'm in the process of trying to get some volunteers to to practice this on. So how do you how do you see this developing? Um, I feel it has something to do with aura cleansing, the, the kind of waving of the hands because I, I keep hearing mm -hmm. my guide waving hands, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. You work with crystals? I don't. I love crystals. I'm feeling like that, that would really, I, I'm seeing you working with somebody and you're like placing crystals on their chakras and stuff. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, and that, that, and then that really helps you with the energy. It helps you um, control, direct the energy you're using from your hands. And I see that would be really, would add to your success. And there are, you know, classes and crystals and stuff. Um, as far as starting out, I, you, I feel like you're going to be, you know, you'll be sent clients and you're going to get a first sort of base of clients very soon. It'll be people you know or people coming to you. And it would not, since you're starting out, be a bad idea to offer to do it like a few practice sessions for free on it, some friends or something. Yeah, well, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing now just to, you know, get used to get used to it and see where I go. That's what I'm in that phase of it now. So, yeah, right now, just ask people if they want a healing, right. or you could, do, or you could do a trade if they're a tarot leader or something. You could do a trade with them. I feel like it's going to take you about six weeks to two months to start to build up, um, paying clients, and then you're going to get word of mouth and you'll do a little marketing, and it's it's going to gradually take off. So, but you have nothing but success coming for you. I see. I see, a, like, I'm seeing, I'm not pulling cards, but I'm seeing in my mind the Ten of Cups, which it's really great because as you do your work, your, your energy is going to improve. You know, when you heal other people, you heal yourself. So you're going to be very magnetic to people. You're, you, you, people will step into your aura, step into your energy, or just be talking to you, and they'll feel the healing coming from, a little healing from that, and that will attract them to you as clients. And you'll get kind of a reputation for being this person that makes people feel good, basically. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds yeah, you're really fun. stepping into the community, yes. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, it's been a while. So I'm, I've, been, I've yeah. been doing foot reflexology for a long time, but I've been doing that for a long time, and I, I, I still like it, but it's like I'm ready to move on. And I also do mm -hmm. artwork. I'm trying to develop a psychic art type of thing on the side. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I see things about this year, the next year, 365 days, 
it's going to be a real opening. You're going to be putting yourself out, and you're really going to be um, uh, attracting a base of clients and stuff over the next year. And you may, may want to do a little marketing. Right. Yeah. So okay. I see, see you. You keep setting your intentions, and your guides are guiding you. It's going to be good. Okay. I didn't even pull a card. It's all on my mind. <laughs> Yeah. Brent, I see a psychic fair where they have okay. healers, and I see you working at the psychic fair, so I think you're about ready uh, to get paid for your healings, that you do have a gift of healing and could do it on a, on a, on a paid basis and get paid uh, for it. And I see you at a psychic fair or expo, you know, doing healings. And I feel that there'll be some connection to a small healing metaphysical store that hires massage therapists and healers. I also think you're going to end up doing massage therapy in the future. I see you studying massage therapy and getting your license and doing healing and massage therapy both. So I feel you're going to be, you know, expanding your horizons, that you're going to expand what you do and that you are going to be able to build up a clientele. With the people you're offering healing for now, they will become pay, paying clients. You know, Initially, you may just do it for free, but they will yeah. become paying clients. So you do have, you will be building up a clientele and being very successful with building of your clientele. So you will do well. And Carl, how can Brent get in contact with you? You can email me at cyoung1890 at gmail.com, cyoung1890, gmail. Or you can text or call me at 714-643-0280, 714-643-0280. And you could get a hold of me at 818 818- Seven four four five two four one, or go to psychichorizon dot com. And thank you for calling the Psychic Horizon Show. All right, thank you both. Take care. You're welcome. Uh, we're, we're, I'm now going to continue my interview with Carl Young on the tarot, and then we're going to take our next caller, which is area code four eight four. How does tarot work as a self-teaching manifestation or meditation device? Well, you can use it, you can use, and it's very well known as a fortune-telling device. That's how people think of it, and that's what it usually is like in movies and stuff. But the original uses of it were for contemplation and mystical understanding. It was often key to Hebrew, the Hebrew alphabet and the Hebrew numer- numerology and the tree of life. So you can put down cards as feedback to what's going on inside of you or how you're, how things are progressing as you manifest things. You can put like a card down in the morning and then see how that card is playing out in your day or you can put like three cards down and you can use it to, as feedback for yourself. It becomes like a mirror to your inside. And the, the tarot, you, one way of looking at the tarot is, is each card is like, there's like 78 cards. It's the 78 aspects of life, the 78 scenarios of life. So you put down a card and it'll let you know which scenario you are on today or in this situation, things like that. And it, it'll tell you about your what's going on inside of you. So it, it's a, it's almost like a Rorschach test or something too. It'll it'll let you know what's going on inside or what's going on outside, depending how you you frame the question. Or it'll just tell you things. You don't even have to ask a question. It'll just tell you things. It's really miraculous. Interesting. It is fascinating. And let's take our next caller, Carl, which is area code 484. Hello, 484. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. My name is Tonette, calling from Philadelphia, PA. Tonette is your name? Yes, Tonette. 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 Hello, Hello. Tonette. Hi. Um, my question is, um, I would like to know a time frame if and when Desiree will be moving in to live in my house with me and get things 
sorted out here. Okay. So you're moving out, or I, I'm not sure if I understand the question. What's that? You're moving house? You're moving to a new house? or? No, I want to know when is she and if she's going to be moving in oh. here to live with me I and see. how if we're going to work, work things out. I didn't catch who this was. Who's she? What's that? Who is it that's moving Desiree. in? I didn't... Desiree. It's a female. Is it like a relative or? Yes, this is a love interest. Yes. Oh, okay. I got you. All right. Gotcha. All right. So let's see what's coming for you guys. And it seems you're asking okay. about how, how you relate to each other. Hmm. Well, I think that at first it might be there might be some tension. You might have some uh, past things to work out with each other, and there might be some um, there needs to be going to be a need for communication. Okay, so you will be able to work. I see that um, there will be a need to, to cut through some some bullshit basically and communicate about some things. And then it'll it really work out. Okay, but there's some stuff that needs to be, the air needs to be cleared. Does that make sense? Yeah, she kind of she kind of um, went off the map for about a week and a half. She hasn't been talking to me, but the plan was she was supposed to be moving in here this month and, you know, going forward here. So I'm not but sure really what. Is that she, needs to, she has something she needs to say. She can't just be quiet about it. She needs to get it off her chest, whatever is bothering her, and you, and you just need to listen and let her talk and come to an understanding. And then at that point, you have a foundation to communicate about how, how you guys can get along. And then it will all clear out. I think there's, there's a real need for communication. Something's being held back because they don't feel like they can talk. So you, both of you need to be really free to talk to each other. And you understand what I'm saying? And then yeah, that's, that's, some of, some that's of the problems, what... some of the problems are exaggerated. It's not as, you know what I'm saying? It's not really, when you get, get talking, you'll find a, the situation is as bad as it seems. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, that, that's on her part. She has to open right. up. She's the one that kind of ran away here, so. Yes. So she is either it giving you a time? Is it giving you a time frame of when you see her moving in here? Um, six weeks. Oh, six weeks. Okay. Yeah, like next month. I'm getting six. I don't think it's six days, and I don't think it's six months, so I think it's, that's what I'm okay. feeling, like maybe in April, late April. Okay. In April. Maybe okay. Maybe toward the end. Maybe, maybe May, early May. It's okay. a communication that needs to happen. Right. Yeah, she has to she has to open up because she's the one that stops communicating. So it's communication is always a two way street. So what you'll have to do is be very open to kind of kind of get her relaxed and let her feel like she can talk. So be open. Right. Don't don't accuse or blame or anything. Just say, listen, you, you know, we've known each other, we're intimate. Just just go ahead and tell me what's bothering you and I'll just listen. And then then you, she can, you can hear what she's saying, and as you hear what she's saying, you can see how her mind is distorting the situation, and you can put her at ease and settle things, and it may take a little while. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, she's holding back on something because she's afraid to say it, I don't know, something like that. Okay. So draw her out. I feel that Desiree um, is a little scared. Of getting close, and I think mm -hmm. that's what the hang up is, and I think that's why she stopped uh, talking to you for the last week and a half. Okay. That she okay. Just has some apprehension, but it looks like she's going to work through that apprehension. I agree with Carl that uh, in April, May is when she'll be living with you, 
She's going to work for that apprehension, and you are going to be together as a couple. And once mm-hmm. she moves in, once she gets over her apprehension and moves in with you, I think that you and Desiree will have a very strong uh, bond and strong connection with each other and that the relationship right. between the two of you will work out, that your friendship will develop into a relationship. Mm. Okay. And, so yeah, the best you can do is what I'm getting is that you just listen to her. Encourage her to talk and listen, and that will draw her out. And just listen. And then in time you, you'll yeah. understand and you can get, and you can start giving feedback. Right. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, it's going to work out. And Carl, how can Tonette get in contact with you? You can email me at cyoung1890gmail.com, cyoung1890gmail.com, or you can text or call me at 714-643-0280, 714-643-0280. Zero two eight zero, and you could get a hold of me at eight one eight seven four four five two four one, or go to psychichorizon dot com. And thank you for calling. Thank you. Have a good day. You're very welcome. You too. Um, we're now ready to take our next caller, which is area code three one two, and then we'll continue our interview with Carl Young on the tarot. Hello, 312. Hi, this is Karen from Chicago. Hi. Hello, Karen. Hi. Um, my question is, um, I went to work with a new temp agency, and I worked on a project for two months, but now the project is over, and I'm wondering if you see me going back to work um, with the present agency that I'm with, maybe them giving me something new, or the past agency, or someone else uh, employing me. Okay. Well, what I see is this project ending and um, they may have something for you, but I think you're going to be moving on, even more about choice, because I think oh, something okay. else is going to come along that's better for you. And it's just going to come to you. Don't worry about it. Okay. Do, I, do I, you I see a see time frame? It's, it's, it's kind of what I'm saying is you could stay there, but something better is coming to, at another company. Okay. Or another division yeah. of this company. I don't know. It's somewhere else. Yeah, I applied. I applied for a full time job um, with the government. I'm just waiting for them to call me. Okay. Yeah, I see a, a good thing coming for you, and it'll 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 come. It's just gonna kind of drop in your lap, and it won't be long. I don't think you'll have to wait a long time. Maybe two or three weeks for you. Start. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, you're in a pipeline, so you're fine. Okay. Yeah, you're going to be good. I feel that you will get the government job, Karen, and it's going to be within two or three weeks that you're going to hear something about the job. There's going to be a little delay, but you will hear about the job in the next two or three weeks and get the job. So any temp job that you take right now is going to be temporarily, a temporary job, and you're not going to be there that a really long, just a few it's weeks. Tight. And I feel that the agency you're with now will get you the job. You know, okay. if they have something coming up shortly in the next few days. You know, so you'll hear about it sometime this week, and you'll probably start it next week. So it does look like you will get a temp job, but you won't be there long because you'll be taking the government job, which is coming up in the next two or three weeks. Okay. Okay. That that sounds about right. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll let you guys know. Definitely. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. 
Our well, next so caller is area code 201. Hello, 201. Hello. Who is the pleasure of speaking to? This is Jackie. Hi, Jackie. And Jackie, what is your Hi. question today? Excuse me? What is your question? I I just did an assessment on a property that I want. I just want to see if you see it working in my favor. Okay, assessment. You want to buy a house? or I'm not sure what house. It's, it, it was my mother's house. And it's in like disarray. It was part of an estate, and I'm just seeing if it's even worth it trying to buy it out of this estate. Okay, so you, in other words, it's in some disrepair, and you're wondering if it's worth it. Just oh my God, it's in a lot of disrepair, but you know. Okay, so you, I'm. What's your question? Should I buy it or not? Or what's your question? I, to be honest with you, I didn't think I was supposed to buy it because because I never got my dis. My disbursement, mm -hmm. but um, I I I really see myself now probably having to buy it out of the debt that the other people created. Okay, so you asking me should you buy out or not? Yes. Okay. Let's see what'll happen with this. Um, I feel like that there's some tension. I don't know if there's other family members, but there's some conflict, and you're feeling a little, a little isolated or a little out of the loop. So I would suggest not to get tangled up into this. So if you can buy out and have some money, and I would suggest to do that based on the card. Does that make sense? That you you would you, you would suggest that I do it. That you buy out because My, it's going to it's going to be a complicated situation and it's going to be. It is complicated. My mother died seven years ago today, and is there some, when my mother in your family about this, is there some? Is there some tension? Oh yeah, there's always been tension since she died, yeah. but they they took everything else, and I'm, you know, it's not going to change. There's going to be all this conflict, and my what I'm my feeling is, it's like if I were in your shoes, I would just take my share and move on because it's going to just be, it's not really going to benefit you to struggle with the situation. Right. I'm saying this as the share because they've sold other properties. It's just my mother's home. Yeah. I would just take the money and move on with it. <laughs> that's, that's that's my feeling about it. But you have to kind of decide what you're going to do. But it's going to be, I'm just letting the cards are saying it's going to be tense and complicated and stuff like that. So, it's going to be what? Tense. There's going to be tension and complications. Personal complications. Okay. And I'm just saying what feels like a releasing good feeling to me, but you have to decide for yourself, but it would be to, just to take your share and move on. Take, take your money, take the money and move on. Does that make sense? Yes, but I, I would be responsible for selling it and I just, you know, Okay. I really didn't want to sell the house. Right. Okay. I mean, everybody has been given court orders. They just defy court orders. I know I'm yeah. going to have to rely upon the authorities. The tension, the tension has already reached its peak a long time ago. Yeah, it, it's going to continue though. It's going to. Uh, it sounds like a hassle. So, but I think you can. In the end, you'll have. You know, you'll be able to walk away with some your share of what it is owed you and. You know, let the troubles be in the past. You know what I mean? Right. I have a sister that's still in the house, but I don't think she's well. Are you able to see if if that's the case? What, say it again. I, I don't know what the. I don't think she's like mentally well. Who is? My sister. Okay. Um. Hold on a second. Yeah, it's I, I she's she's kind of withdrawn into herself or something and she's she's a little paranoid is what I get. Did, did she seem a little paranoid? I like she hides from me, but I, I need her to leave, you know. And I you yeah. know, I don't wanna have a hassle she, with her. She's like holding on. She's holding on. She's 
a lot of fear. And that and that plays in her mind and exaggerates things. So you, if you can't communicate with her, you might have to take whatever legal action you can. Try and communicate with her and try to put her mind at ease. Because she, otherwise she's going to dig in her heels, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. She's digging in her heels now, but it doesn't make sense because she's, she's, she's actually breaking her heels by doing it. So you have to put her, she's got a lot of fears in her mind, okay? And they're mm-hmm. exaggerated. They're exaggerated. They're not real, you know, but she's seen, demonizing you and seeing you as the enemy and all this stuff that's exaggerated. So you're going to have to, it's the first thing you might want to try to do is put her at mind at ease somehow with some evidence. And then if not, you may have to take some legal action because she's, she's really dug her heels in. And, it, and the, the more you work, work at it, the more she digs them in. You know what I mean? She's yes, like a, I do. Like a Kermit crab in, her, in its shell, you know, and you got to try to get her out so she can be reasonable, which she is capable of being. But she's so emotionally wound up right now, it's hard for her to be reasonable. She's not, she's not like totally crazy or anything. She's just got a lot of fear, which creates she's anger. She's living in an apartment situation. This woman, this woman was wealthy all her life. Yes. And, and and she made a big mess of her life, and I don't think that I should have to be held responsible for it. I just want no, to know if she's going to be. That's true. But it's a situation you have to deal with on its own terms, unfortunately. Does that make sense? Whether It's not a matter of what should be or shouldn't be. It's just the situation that has to be dealt with. Getting caught up in shoulds and stuff just complicates it. You're okay. the adult in the well, room. You're the adult in the room, and the children are the children. You know what I mean? And that, you know, that's just a difficult situation to be in. I really sympathize with you. Yeah, so it is difficult. It, I feel you know, she was you're, going to, to, you're going to have to get a court order to get her out mm-hmm. of the house once you purchase the house. Because once you purchase the house, the house will be go and be in your name, and you will be the legal owner of the house. I feel you're going to purchase the home. And then you'll have to get a court order to get her to move because she really doesn't have any place to go. She's burned her bridges. She had money at one time, but she doesn't have much money now because of her lack of irresponsibility in handling the money. She mishandled her money. And so I'm afraid you're going to have to get a court order, you know, to get her out of the house because she won't move willingly. So you're going to have a, I agree with Carl, that there's going to be a fight that you're going to have on your hand. I understand, uh, but I I do understand. I would try to communicate with her and see if you can get her to reason with you, and then maybe she can can have a better ending. But eventually you may have to take legal action. Right. I I, I do anticipate taking legal actions because, again, like you said, she's burnt all her bridges. And, yeah. you know, I'm at the place in my life. I don't think I should have to be penalized because you, you burned no. everything up. No. Enough is enough. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for yeah. calling. And there's another brother. Thank you for calling the Rise Horizon show, Jackie. Excuse me, now. We're going to be ending the show now. Okay. 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 But Thanks for calling. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Carl? I'm oh, here. I wanted to thank you for being on the Psychic Horizon show today. You'll be back in the future. I wanted to thank Tiffany White, Sage Woman of Goldilocks Production, for producing the Psychic Horizon show. And I want to thank all the callers who participated in the Psychic Horizon show today. Thank you, Shelley. It's always a pleasure to come on your show. You're welcome, Carl, and, and I'll see you soon. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.